Hey guys, we are graphing a polynomial equation today, okay? So whenever we're being asked to graph something, we can always pick a number for x, plug it in, get a y, and graph that ordered pair, right? But that can be very time consuming, or we don't know what numbers to plug in that give us a good idea of what the graph looks like, right? So there's a better way, okay? So for this, we're gonna follow a few steps. First, we're gonna factor if needed and find our zeros. Second, we're gonna look at end behavior, Third, we're going to look at our multiplicity, and then there's an optional fourth step that we'll talk about once we get there, okay? So my first step is to factor and find my zeros. Guess what? We already factored here. Isn't that nice? We could write this one twice and this one three times since they're squared and cubed, but we don't really have to, okay? So now to find my zeros. When I say zeros, we're looking for where my graph touches the x-axis, okay? So that's when y is zero, right? So we're really setting this equal to zero. And then once you do that, you end up setting each of these equal to zero, right? So to find my zeros, we are going to set x plus two equal to zero, x minus two equal to zero, and x minus four equal to zero, okay? Now, I know these are squared and cubed. We'll talk about that in just a second, okay? So now I'm just going to solve for x, right? So on this one, I would subtract 2 from both sides and get x equals negative 2. On this one, I would add 2 to both sides and get x equals 2. And on this one, I would add 4 to both sides and get x equals 4, okay? Now... Mm, well, let's graph them first. <laughs> okay, so we know that these are where we touch the x-axis, right? So I've got negative 2, 2, and 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, now I am going to make a note for myself because of this squared and cubed, right? Because I could have written x minus 2 equals 0 twice because there's really two of those, right? So I'm going to put, that's called a multiplicity. I'm going to say this has a multiplicity of two, right? Because I could have that answer twice. And this one has a multiplicity of three, okay? Because I could have had that answer three times, right? Since this is really x minus four times x minus four times x minus four, okay? And those will come into play in just a minute. Okay, once I find my zeros and graph those, Next, I'm going to look at end behavior, okay? So from this point, I want to know if my graph goes up or down. And also from this point, I want to know if my graph goes up or down, okay? So I'm going to show you a cute little chart. If this helps you, go ahead and take a screenshot if you're on a phone or take a picture of it. But if you're like, I don't want to read that, just show me. That's what I'm going to do next, okay? So from here, we start with the right side, okay? And for that, we're going to look at our leading coefficient, okay? Now, if there, right now, my leading coefficient is just really a one, right? But if there were numbers in front of these x's, I would need to multiply it all out to see what my leading coefficient was. But since they're all just x's, my leading coefficient is a one, right? But all I really care about is if it's positive or negative, okay? If my leading coefficient is positive, this side is going to end up. If it's negative, it's going to end down, okay? So it's positive, so I know the right side of my graph is going to end up, okay? Now for the left side of the graph, I look at my degree, which is the highest exponent, okay? Now you might be able to say, sorry, <clears throat> you might be tempted to say, well, three is the highest exponent, right? But we need to think of what the highest exponent is, again, if this were all multiplied together right? So if this were all multiplied together, I would have these three x's, these two x's, and this x all multiplied together, right? So I would end up with x to the sixth once I had this all multiplied out, right? So my degree, my highest exponent is six, okay? So I just need to look at if it's even or odd, okay? If it's even, my left side of the graph is going to end the same way as the right side. If this side's up, it's gonna end up. If this side's down, it would end down, okay? Now, if it's an odd degree, like one, three, five, then 
the left side will do the opposite of the right side. Okay. Now ours is even. So since the right side ends up, the left side is also going to end up. Okay. So we're feeling pretty good. We have some points. We know which way our direction, ooh, which direction our graph ends, right? But now we're going to look at these multiplicities we talked about. Okay. If you have an odd multiplicity, the graph will go right through the point. Okay. If you have an even multiplicity, it's going to bounce either up or down, whichever direction it's going. Okay. So for example, I've got X equals negative two. There was just one of those, right? So it really had a multiplicity of one. So my graph is going to go through the point at negative two. Okay. Then at two, we had a multiplicity of two. It's even. So that means it's going to bounce off that point, kind of like a parabola, right? That would be like an upside down parabola. And then we go back to this guy and he, I don't know why I made him a male, but there you go, has a multiplicity of three, which means we're going to go through the point. Now, technically there's really like a slight curve there, but your teacher probably does, isn't too concerned about that at this point. Okay. So I know I'm going to go through here because there's multiplicity of one bounce here, multiplicity of two through here, multiplicity of three ending both up. So it's going to kind of be like a weird looking W, right? So we're going through bounce and through and up. And that is approximately what that graph will look like. Okay. If you remember, we said there was an optional fourth step. Okay. That optional fourth step would be to plug in some other points to figure out exactly where these bumps go. Okay. You'll notice I didn't put any tick marks on the y axis. And that's because I don't know exactly how far down those dips go, but. It's just a rough sketch. So unless your teacher really wants you to graph a few more points, you probably don't need to worry about it. If your teacher does want that, or if you just feel good in your heart about doing that, go ahead and plug in negative one or zero or three to figure out exactly where those dips go. Okay. All right. I hope this made sense. If you need some more examples, I will link a playlist for you. Bye.